Welcome to the News in Motion podcast. Over the next several months leading up to the midterm elections, Gail will focus most of her podcasts on equipping and educating voters and encouraging people to register to vote. Gail is also available to serve as a community speaker on voting and civic engagement. If you are interested in working with her, email Gail at newsinmotionwithgail at gmail.com to schedule her today. If you're a candidate and would like to join Gail for a segment or submit your advertisement to be aired for a fee, email newsinmotionwithgail at gmail.com. Now for today's podcast. Joyful Friday, everyone. This is Gail Dudley, and it is time for the NIM podcast for today. Hopefully you have been enjoying this past month, all the podcasts from September 2022 as we really zoned in and focused on community service, civic engagement, volunteerism, as well as the political climate, which also includes voter education. Today's podcast is really going to be short, but I want to give you some important information as you prepare to go into your polling location, whether you are voting early or voting the day of, which is November the 8th, 2022, so that you can have the information you need. So you may want to grab a pen or a pencil, piece of paper, or your smartphone, take memos or your laptop, type this out, text this information out to other people. Be sure to download this particular podcast and please share. You never know who may need this information. So what I want to give you today are dates. I want to give you dates. Now, y'all, the uh, midterm election ballots, um, they're beginning to be cast real soon here. There were actually six states that started early voting in September. And if you are unaware of those dates, I'm going to give them to you now. So if you live in the state of Minnesota, early voting started for you on September the 23rd. If you live in South Dakota, early voting started for you on September the 23rd as well. If you live in Virginia, September 23rd. The state of Wyoming, September 23rd. Illinois, September the 29th. And Michigan, September the 29th. Again, if you're in Minnesota, South Dakota, Virginia, Wyoming, Illinois, or Michigan, early voting has already begun in your area. Um, Next up, we're in the month of October, so let me give you the state and the dates. Um, Maine, you can begin early voting on October the 9th. California, you can begin early voting on October the 10th. Montana, October the 11th. Nebraska, October the 11th. New Mexico, October the 11th, Arizona and Indiana and Ohio, your early voting will begin on October the 12th. Again, Arizona, Indiana, and Ohio, your early voting will begin on October the 12th. Georgia, you can begin voting on October 17th. Iowa, October the 19th. Kansas, Rhode Island, and Tennessee. The three of your states are also early voting beginning October the 19th. So October the 19th is Iowa, Kansas, Rhode Island, and Tennessee. North Carolina, you can begin early voting on October the 20th. Washington, that's the state of Washington, October the 21st. Massachusetts and Nevada, your early voting will begin on October the 22nd. Arkansas. Colorado, Idaho, South Carolina, and Texas, your early voting will begin on October the 24th. I'll give October 24th again. Arkansas, Colorado, Idaho, South Carolina, and Texas. October the 25th, the states to begin early voting are Hawaii, Missouri, Louisiana, and Utah. Again, October the 25th, Hawaii, Missouri, Louisiana, and Utah. 
West Virginia, your early voting will begin on October 26th. Maryland, that's the state of Maryland, October 27th. Delaware, October the 28th. Florida, October the 29th. New Jersey and New York, yours are also October the 29th. So again, for October the 29th, that's Florida, New Jersey, and New York. In November, uh, Oklahoma, you can early vote as of November the 2nd. And then Kentucky, uh, your early voting will begin on November the 3rd. Um, so that's that's what's happening. Now, what varies by location, Alaska varies by location, though most will start on October 24th. So Alaska, and I'm going to give these states first, Alaska, North Dakota, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Vermont, and Wisconsin, your early voting varies by location. So you really need to check your Secretary of State's website to find out your particular location and when you can start voting. So Alaska varies by location, though most will start uh, October 24th. North Dakota varies by county, though no later than October 24th. Oregon varies by county, though drop boxes could be available as early as October 19th. Pennsylvania varies by county, though it could be available as early as September the 19th. Vermont varies by location, though no later than September 26th which means Vermont, you can start early voting now as of the time of this podcast release. And Wisconsin will vary by location, though not before October the 25th. You're probably asking me, why am I giving a podcast on this? More and more in the research and the study that I do and the sample uh, surveys that I take from constituents all over the United States, I'm learning many people are unaware when they can begin early voting. I will also put in the description of this particular podcast a link that will that you can click and take that will take you directly to the voting guidelines for your state. You have heard me say this now for several months, and I'm going to say it again on this podcast. This is the most important midterm elections of our lifetime. No matter where you stand, whether you are on the Democratic side or the Republican side, or if you are in the middle, in the independent side, or maybe you are a libertarian or the Green Party, or maybe you don't have any labels at all, this is the most important midterm election of our lifetime. A lot is writing on the table here, a lot. So I need to also share with you the last days to register to vote. So I'm gonna give you all the states for the last day to register to vote uh, for October the 9th. So here are the states. These are now the last day that you can register to vote um, in these states. Now, first up is October the 9th, Alaska, Arkansas, Georgia, Hawaii, Louisiana, Mississippi, Montana, Ohio, Rhode Island, Tennessee, and Texas. Again, the last day to register to vote, uh, October the 9th for the following states, Alaska, Arkansas, Georgia, Hawaii, Louisiana, Mississippi, Montana, Ohio, Rhode Island, Tennessee, and Texas. By the date of this podcast, which released on Friday, October the 7th, go ahead and register today. It takes less than five minutes. But if you want to wait to the date, again, October the 9th is Alaska, Arkansas, Georgia, Hawaii, Louisiana, Mississippi, Montana, Ohio, Rhode Island, Tennessee, and Texas. October the 10th, there are three states, Arizona, Florida, Indiana. October the 10th is the last day you can register to vote. October the 11th, the states are Kentucky, Nevada, and New Mexico. Again, October the 11th, Kentucky, 
Nevada, New Mexico. I'm going to keep going. Hopefully you're going to hear your state and you're going to say, okay, let me mark this in my calendar. Let me get ready to go. Um, then we have, um, let me see where else I can go. October the 15th is Delaware. October the 18th is District of Columbia. Uh, Idaho is um, October the 15th. Illinois, October the 12th. Kansas, October the 18th. I gave you Kentucky. Um, Maine, October the 18th. Maryland, October the 18th. Massachusetts, October the 19th. Last day to register to vote. Minnesota, October the 18th. Missouri, October the 12th. Um, I gave you Montana already. I'm going to put a link. If I if you did not hear your state called, I'm going to put a link in the description of this podcast where you can check your last day to register to vote. I'm going to have them. Actually, I'm not going to put a link. I'm going to actually make it so easy for you. And I'm going to put each state and the date. The other thing I want to share with you on this podcast today, just call this an informational podcast, if you will, the student debt relief. Um, what you need to know about student debt relief, you can find it at this website. I will also put this link in the description, and that's www.studentaid.gov backslash debt relief. All right, y'all, the application window has opened this month and it will close on December 31st. Now y'all, the online application is short and simple. There are no supporting documents that are needed to complete it. After your submission, the federal student aid at the U.S. Department of Education will review your application, determine your eligibility for debt relief, work with your loan ser uh, server servicer, excuse me, to process your relief, and again, more information where you can also get regular updates. This link will be in the description, but that is at www.studentaid.gov backslash debt relief. Along with that, I want to share this information with you as I've been talking about what's on the ballot. What's on the ballot? And these are just a few things I've been talking about. Immigration is on the ballot. Healthcare is on the ballot. Human rights are, are on the ballot. Women's rights are on the ballot. Um, uh, inflation is on the ballot. Democracy is on the ballot. So I want to stress that to all of you. Now, I pulled up, and I'm going to put this link in the description as well. I went researching candidate fundraising. Now, it's in the millions. like hundreds of millions of dollars. It's somewhat shocking to me that we spend so much money and we give so much money to candidates to run for office, but yet the candidates' constituents, that's you and I, and, and the, the people they serve and the needs in America, why aren't some of those dollars being used to help with child poverty, homelessness, and food insecurity, which all three are on the ballot in this upcoming election. You may ask, well, where am I getting that from? Well, we still have a serious issue when it comes to food insecurity right here in, the, in America. USDA.gov is reporting how many people lived in food insecure households in 2021, and they're still working on these numbers for 2022. In 2021, 33.8 million people lived in food insecure households. 8.6 million adults lived in household households, excuse me, with very low food security. 5.0 million children lived in food insecure households in which children along with adults were food insecure. Sometimes we ask the question, why aren't children learning in school? Well, they're hungry. And when someone is hungry, they're unable to comprehend the lessons that are being taught. That's why they're not doing well in school. At least that's one of the reasons why. 
they're hungry, they're waking up, they're cold, they're homeless, they're in child poverty, they go to school, no food, no transportation, maybe their clothes don't fit, they can't comprehend 5.0 children. Um, that's 500, that's 521,000 uh, children, 0.7% uh, of the nation's children lived in households in which one or more child experienced low food uh, security. Now, y'all, food security status of the U.S. households with children in 2021 among U.S. households with children under 18, y'all, that number is 87.5% of households with children were food secure in 2021. All right, so household food insecurity affected 12.5% of households with children in 2021. Not only food insecurity, I also want to lift up homeless population by state in 2022. I'm not going to call each state. I'm going to put that link in the description as well. These are things that I believe as citizens of the United States of America that we need to pay attention to. I'm afraid that so often we find ourselves in a position that all is well in many cases, so we're not concerned or we don't concern ourselves with these other things. And then when there's um, conversations about tax breaks or, or tax increases or health care or property tax increase or decrease or whatever it is, we don't connect the dots enough to understand it comes back to these things that I'm sharing here. That's why town halls are important. Debates are important to attend, to go, and to ask questions, to find out and do our research on these candidates beyond the letter behind their name, whether that is a D or an R or an I or G or L for libertarian. It's beyond that. It's like, what are these individual people going to do? Because they get free health care. They have uh, the luxury to come and go when they please, which that's great. That's brilliant. But we're paying them. Do you know why we're paying them? Do you know how they're voting when they're going into these chambers? This is information we need to know. And this is why I take my time and share it on News in Motion. So let me go to homeless population. The World Population Review is reporting in the United States, there are over a half a million people experiencing homelessness. These individuals live in a temporary shelter or transitional housing, or y'all, they sleep in a place not meant for habitation, such as abandoned buildings with all types of rodents and the possibility of a building to fall down on them while they sleep or while they are trying to be warm. Y'all, the top four causes of homelessness in order are, listen to this, number one, lack of affordable housing. Number two, unemployment. Number three, poverty. And number four, low wages. So even when we're telling people go get a job, we're telling them to go get a job, but maybe it's low wages. So maybe they still have to live in their car or live in an abandoned building because they cannot make in meets. They're food insecure. They don't have uh, heat or electricity. Y'all, this is an ongoing cycle. And y'all, this is the system in which many people live in America. Y'all, overall, 66.7% of the total homeless population of the United States is single individuals, with the remaining 33.3% being families. I wanted to share that with you. Y'all, the state of California currently has the highest homeless population with about 151,278 homeless people. Y'all, the state of California, where the majority of celebrities live. I just want to put that out there. No, it's not the celebrity's responsibility to find housing for them. And many celebrities have different programs and they're doing different fundraisers and so forth. So I'm not knocking that, but y'all just think about that for a moment. How crazy is that? I just want you to hear about that. Y'all, here are the 10 states with the most homeless people. California, uh, again, I gave you an average of 151,278. New York, 91,271. Florida, 
27,487, Texas 27,229, Washington 22,923, Massachusetts 17,971, Oregon 14,655, Pennsylvania uh, 13,375, Arizona 10,979, Ohio 10,655. Again, I'm going to put that link so that you can look at this information for yourself. But there's one more thing before I sign off today. Child poverty. Y'all, the United States Census is reporting that child poverty fell to a record low of 5.2% in 2021. Now, y'all, the expansions to child tax credit that CTC contributed to 46% of the decline in child poverty since 2020. Now, y'all, child poverty calculated by the Supplemental Poverty measure, that's the SPM, fell to its lowest record level in 2021, declining 46% from 9.7% in 2020 to 5.2% in 2021, according to the U.S. Census Census Bureau data that was uh, recently released. Now, y'all, a key component of the 2021 American Rescue Plan Act, that's the ARPA, was that the child tax credit expansion the, uh, the American Rescue Plan Act increased the value of the child tax credit from 2000 to 3600 for children under six years of age and to 3000 for children between ages six to 17. Here's my question. Y'all, we have one million children under six. This was in 2021. This uh, child tax credit lifted 5.3 million people out of poverty including 2.9 million children. But here's my question. These are the questions we need to be asking. Is this a fair analysis? Y'all, the funds were released to the parents or to the guardians. Does this equate to children coming out of poverty? And we're now in the middle of an of a, uh, of a possible recession. We have all this inflation that's going on. We still are in the middle of uh, food insecurity. And there's still a rise in homelessness. So are these numbers skewed? Again, y'all, town halls and debates can help us understand this and understand where the candidates that we're voting for, how they're going to align with this. Another question, with food insecurity still a basic need, wouldn't the numbers balance out across the board? Why are those numbers still high when it comes to food insecurity? and a decrease in child poverty? These are the questions we must ask those who are running for office. So if you're wondering where you can go register to vote, I have several places. You can go to www.vote.us. You can go to www.ballotpedia.org. All of these are going to be in the description. You can go to www.iwillvote.com. You can go to www.vote.com. You can go to rockthevote.com. You can go to whenweallvote.org. There are many places. You can also go to your own Secretary of State's office to register to vote. You can also check your voter registration, which makes sure everything is in order before you go to the polls to vote for this midterm election. I am Gail Dudley. This was an informational session that I wanted to share with you about the upcoming election. Please download this. Please pass it on to other people. Also go to the description and check those links that I shared with you, especially your state's voting guide so that you know what you need when you go to the polls. All right, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Gail Dudley. This has been an informational podcast for the upcoming midterm elections. You all have a great day.